So we've just finished talking about uh, classification, and now it's time to finally jump into regression. We, we've danced around regression a little bit in some of the earlier videos and even used some linear models in regression in the context of classification. Uh, regression, fundamentally, it's a supervised uh, learning problem. Uh, in general, the inputs to a regression model can be either numerical or categorical. For what we're doing for this set of videos, we're going to assume everything is in numerical form. Uh, but as we get a little bit further into things like decision trees, and in particular regression trees, uh, we'll be able to work both with numerical and categorical data. The outputs are also numerical, and generally we're thinking of these outputs uh, in terms of being continuous values. On the error metric side, uh, we, we talked a little bit about this already. Uh, fundamentally, error metrics are some sort of a function of the difference between the ground truth that we have from a training data set and the values that we're predicting. So, so we've already talked about um, sum squared error or mean squared error, um, but there another common choice that gets made is mean absolute error. We'll, we'll define those more precisely. All right, so that's the high level view of regression. Uh, what I want to do is define a little bit of notation uh, and, and then we'll talk about uh, the, the math behind uh, regression. So tra tra transitioning over to the iPad. iPad is recording. Okay, so since this is a supervised learning problem, we have some sort of a training set that is a set of pairs of inputs. And I'm going to uh, refer to these as uh, the, the input side as, as a big X with an index indicating which uh, sample we have. So we have big X and for the instant, I'm going to assume that we have a scalar output. We'll call that a uh, little y zero here. So we have an input out desired output pair here and a full data set is going to be a, a, a whole list of these. So x1, y1, x2, uh, y2, and on down the line. And we're going to have uh, m of these. So x, m minus one uh, and y, uh, m minus one. E even though we're assuming that y is a scalar right now, uh, in practice, we can also imagine it as being a, uh, a, a vector. So total of m of these things. Now, now the inputs are vectorial in and of themselves. So, so one of these, say x1, is actually uh, a, an n vector. And let's draw that out as well and introduce some, no some more notation. So, so x, big X one, uh, I'm going to write as a, as a column vector here. Uh, the first element is little x, one comma zero. So the, the one comes from the fact that uh, we, have, uh, we're, we have big X one here and zero is the zeroth element. So, so it's X one comma something, one X one comma two and on down the line to X one comma uh, N minus one. So this is, this is an N dimensional vector. And we've already introduced the, uh, the model, the, the linear model, uh, but let's write it in terms of the notation that we're using here. So I have uh, some sort of a uh, prediction I'm trying to make, which is y hat, and I'm trying to, to predict the, the jth element of some data set. And what we mean by this being a linear model is that this is a weighted sum 
across uh, this whole n vector. So i is going to index over our elements of the n vector. And then we have our, our parameters, wi, uh, x, j, comma i. So again, the j here corresponds to the particular data set element and the i corresponds to the uh, element within the n vector. And then typically we also have a bias term and we're gonna call this wn. So we have a total of n plus one parameters here. These are uh, w0, w1, all the way out to wn minus one is what's in that sum, but then we also have this wn, the bias term. Now, um, what you'll see in the book and you'll see in various writings, uh, people will tend to work in this form in some cases and others will, will tend to make this WN term disappear. And the, the trick for making that happen is that we actually translate this N vector into an N plus one vector. Where uh, all of the elements are the same, x10, x11, all the way down to x1, n minus 1, and we append a 1 at the very end of this vector. And, and when we, when we uh, represent our n vector in this way, uh, the model then reduces down to just the sum component here. So we're going to sum i equals zero to n, and it's wi uh, xji here. So the, the, the wn that we had here is now uh, absorbed into uh, the last element of the sum. So, so as I said, you, you're going to see both, uh, both forms of the uh, math out there, and I think the book even flips back and forth at various times. Um, what I'm going to do is, is focus on, on using this ladder, uh, this ladder form. Now this is the, what we refer to as the scalar representation of our linear model, uh, but it's actually quite convenient to work in more of a linear algebra kind of world where we have uh, things expressed in terms of vector and matrix multiplications. And the, the book uh, actually, fl again, flips back and forth between these notations. There, there is a small section that tries to explain uh, that relationship, but I, I wanted to hit that here with, within this notation. And the idea is uh, if, we, if we imagine taking all of these parameters, we'll call that a, a big W, and placing them in a column vector as well. So that's composed of W0, W1, W2, all the way down to Wn. Then we can express our, our model in this way. W transpose uh, xj. So, so xj here is, is going to be uh, this, this form of, of our input vector. And uh, so, so we've integrated in the, uh, the bias term. And, and let's, just, uh, let's just work through the mechanics of, of this. So uh, let's substitute in uh, w transpose. That gives us a, a row vector, w0, w1, uh, down to Wn, and we're multiplying that by a column vector. So xj0, xj1, uh, on down the line to uh, xjn, which happens to be equal to 1. For those of you who've been through linear algebra class, the multiplication of these two should, should be uh, familiar to you, uh, but for everybody else, let's just quickly hit that. Um, so, so to multiply a, a, row, 
a, a row vector by a column vector, uh, that what, what we do is we, uh, we take the first element uh, of each and we multiply those two pieces together. So we have W0, X, J0. And then we add that product to uh, the product of W1 and XJ1. And, and we add that to the, to the next product and on down the line. And the last one is WN, XJN. And uh, so zooming out here so we can actually see, the, the key observation here is that this sum that's right here is identical uh, to this sum that's sitting up here. But what we get out of this is uh, this form of the model here is a, a lot more compact than having to write it in, in this form. Uh, and, and so the, the math that you tend to see uh, tends to migrate toward this vector matrix uh, notation. Let, let me do one more thing as far as vector, vectors and matrices go. So imagine if I were to uh, take a couple of the X column vectors and append them together. So imagine if I took uh, X zero and appended it together with uh, X one, what I, what I mean by that, so there's really a comma there or a space there. What I, what I mean by that is that I have uh, X zero zero here, X zero one, X zero two, et cetera, down to X zero N. And so that's the, the first column vector and the next column vector over is I have uh, X one zero, X one uh, one, X one two, all the way down to X one two. So we're literally just placing these two column vectors next to each other. If I define this as this, the, now it's a matrix as capital X here, then, then let's look at what happens when we multiply uh, W transpose by this big X. So let's, let's work through uh, that. So this is equal to uh, W0, W1, W2 out to WN multiplied by this stuff right here. And I'm just gonna copy it and drop it in right there. So, so when we multiply these two, uh, the, these two things together, this row vector by this matrix together, what we mean by this uh, mathematically is uh, the, the result is going to be two, uh, two elements uh, long. It's a row vector of two elements. And uh, the first element is the Ws multiplied by this column vector here. And the second element is again the Ws multiplied by this column here. So let's write those out. So we have W zero x zero zero plus w one x zero one etc down to w n x zero n so that's that's the the first column here and then the second element which we would normally write in this place here but we're out of space uh, so I'm going to just step down to, to one level. This is uh, equal to W0, X10, W1, X11, and on down to WN, X11N. And uh, based on what we learned uh, up here, with this relationship uh, uh, that, that we expressed at, at this point here, um, 
this is equivalent to having uh, w transpose x zero as one element. That's a scalar. The result of that product is a scalar. And then the second uh, element also is a scalar. So the, so the, the key point here is that uh, this trick of appending multiple column vectors to form this big X, uh, we, we can multiply the resulting matrix by W and what it does for us is that it in parallel computes uh, all uh, of these uh, products here. And, and furthermore, these, uh, these multiplications of the individual uh, vectors, these are uh, independent of one another. In computing this term here, x0 does not play a role. It's only x1 that, that plays a role. So we can, we can generalize this by, by saying, uh, by defining x not as just the appending of uh, two column vectors, but we can append every one that we have. So x0, x1, all the way down to x m minus one. So we had a total of m of, of these things. And that, that gives us a, a very large matrix. And then if we, uh, so if we multiply this by W transpose, the question is what do we have? And I am going to write that in terms of Y hat. And what we mean by Y hat here is that uh, it is a row vector in and of itself that has all of the individual, uh, uh, has individual terms, one for each column of X. So we end up with W transpose X zero as one scalar term, W transpose X one, all the way out to W transpose uh, X M minus one. So that's, that's what we mean by Y. We can also we can also define a if we come all the way back to the top here where we we started with uh, an input and a desired uh, output I can also write those desired outputs in vector form and let me do that so so this is a, a row vector uh, y zero y one y2 all the way out to y uh, m minus one. So, so one of the keys here is that uh, y, y versus y hat, they have the same number of uh, elements and the elements correspond to one another. So, so the, the jth element of, of y corresponds to the jth element of, of y hat. Y j is the desired value, Y hat j is, is the predicted value. Okay, so, uh, so this, this matrix math here, hopefully it's feeling uh, uh, familiar to, to most of you. Uh, it's, it, it's okay if, if this is new. Uh, just think of it as a nice compact way of representing lots of scalar operations. Okay, so let, let's start talking about uh, models here for just a little bit. I'm going to drop down to, back down to a model that I can draw, which, which means I have, I have one uh, parameter. Uh, so, here, so here I have x0 is, is a scalar input, and I have a prediction, that either a desired value, which is, uh, which is which is y, or I have my y hat if I'm making a, a prediction. Actually, let me stay in the same uh, font for those. So as, as we've already talked before, if, if we have a training set, we can express uh, the training set in terms of pairs of x0 and uh, desired uh, values. So those, those show up as points in this space. And again, our, our model is y hat j for the jth element. In this particular case is just w0, x0, 
plus W1. And depending upon what these parameters are, I will end up with a different, uh, a different line in this space. So for example, I might end up with, uh, say, this line right, uh, right here. I, if I start changing my, my W1 parameter here, say I start to increase W1, then this line actually uh, moves upwards. And it, but it stays parallel to the purple line. I know it doesn't quite look like that, but it does uh, stay purple. Uh, it doesn't quite look like that, but it does stay parallel uh, to the purple line. If I, if I change uh, W0, then that gives me, uh, if I assume, if I starting from the, the purple line and I assume this is zero right here, then that changes the, uh, the slope. Place that carefully there. Um, so, so if I started with the purple line and I modified just the W0, then that changes the, the slope of the line. Okay, so uh, let me clean this up a little bit and we can talk about what we mean by error here. I'm gonna keep the, uh, the orange line. So, so the, what we mean by this orange line is that uh, if I play in a new uh, novel value, so I might play in a, an X zero right here, what the model is going to do is look up uh, where the orange line is at that point, and that becomes our, our prediction. So that's our, our y hat that's going to correspond to this, this x here. So that might be an xj giving me a y hat j. Some of the places that we query might be, might be right here. We, we have a, a training set element that sits right here. That's the height of that is the y uh, the yj, so we'll call that xj now. The height of this point, uh, the, the true height is yj. But what the model predicts is not this height here, but it actually goes up to the line and uh, predicts this height right here. So this is yj hat. And the difference between yj and yj hat is our error. And that is, that is this distance right here. So what I can do is, is uh, write my error in terms of, uh, so error for the jth uh, sample is the difference between these two. So yj minus yj hat. So, so we have a, a real error there. We have, uh, we have real errors here, 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 and here. Um, our goal as part of doing the uh, regression process, of going through the regression process, is to try to minimize those errors in some way. So, so clearly, if this orange line were far off this screen, that would not be a really good model for, for these data. So we've already written one uh, one particular error metric, and, and that uh, lo looks like this. It's a sum over all of the, the, uh, the elements in the data set, and that is a sum over j, ej squared, which, of course, is just, you, you've seen it in this form, yj minus yj hat, uh, squared. So, so this particular error metric, this is called mean squared error. Uh, we we actually use this as as we were doing some of our classification work. Um, one of the uh, when we're presenting errors. Uh, say if we're reporting results in a paper, sometimes we use mean squared error. Uh, if the, the, the units of, of this error metric are in equal to the units of uh, the, this output variable, 
uh, squared. So if, if yj is in terms of units of meters, then error is going to be uh, in terms of uh, meters squared. And, and that's a little bit of an awkward, if we're talking about lengths, that's a little bit of an awkward uh, way to think about lengths. Uh, if I have uh, time, for example, if, if y is, is a measure of time, then it's not really clear what we mean by time squared. Um, so, so it's uh, a, so this is MSE. So, so it's very common for us not to think in terms of MSE, uh, but instead to, uh, to use root mean squared error as a, as a means of reporting uh, results. And that's just the square root of MSE. So if Y then is, in, is uh, in terms of meters, then RMSE is also in terms of meters and likewise time and, and time. So, so this is a little bit easier to, uh, to interpret. Fundamentally, if I'm trying to minimize uh, mean squared error and comparing that to models where I'm, uh, where, where I'm uh, trying to minimize root mean squared error, I, I will end up with the same answer. Uh, and that's because the square root function is a monotonic, monotonic function. Another form of uh, error metric is uh, mean absolute error. So this is, so the A is absolute. And that looks like this. Apologize, I'm mixing my variables here. This is a sum over j here, and likewise sums over j's uh, up above. So, so this is just the absolute value of, of ej, uh, which is which is uh, sum uh, over absolute values of yj minus y hat j. One of the nice things about absolute error is that it uh, it, it tends to be uh, much less sensitive to outliers. So with, with mean squared error, if I have a say a, a this happens a lot when we have really bad data, uh, we can have a yj that is very incorrect, and the model that we really want to have. And, and maybe it's guided by the remainder of the data set. The model we'd really like to have uh, wants to be at one place, uh, and, uh, and but yet uh, it's quite different than the true yj. So let me actually let's go back to this picture here. So imagine I have a a data point that's that's sitting say way out uh, over here, whereas the rest of the the, the training sample are are sitting uh, in in the original configuration. What mean squared error is going to do, we're, we're actually squaring this difference here. And because this difference is so much larger than all of the other differences, then this particular point actually is going to pull uh, the best, what's considered the best line, the, the, the one that uh, minimizes uh, mean squared error. It's, it's going to pull the whole line a little bit closer to itself. So we, we might end up with something more uh, along those lines. Uh, so mean squared error is sensitive to, to outliers. Uh, mean absolute error tends not to be uh, sensitive to outliers uh, since the, the uh, contribution to the sum is, is just linear in the difference between uh, yj and yj hat. One of the reasons why we tend not to see uh, mean absolute error uh, is that uh, with mean squared error, uh, it's much easier to uh, uh, to differentiate the the error metric, uh, and 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 so the mathematics tend to work out uh, quite well. But mean absolute error, the the current set of techniques that we have available uh, to us, uh, mean absolute error, uh, and 
and, and, and so the mathematics tend to work out uh, quite well. Um, so, um, mean, but mean absolute error, the, the current set of techniques that we have available uh, to us, uh, mean absolute error is essentially just as easy to use as an error metric. One of the great advantages of using mean squared error as our, as our metric and having a linear model uh, is that there is a closed form solution uh, uh, for the set of parameters of the uh, that minimize the, of the mean squared error. Mean squared error is our and the, the book uh, presents a, a, a particular uh, solution. Uh, it is called, the, in the book, it's, it's called the normal equation. That minimize the mean squared error. Um, frankly, I have no idea where this terminology comes from. I've never seen it before. A particular solution. The the book also in the book is it's a little bit sloppy in in how it's defining what uh, what uh, big X is. Um, in our case, we're going to define big X as the appending of a bunch of column vectors, as we've already uh, talked about, and it's a little bit in how it. And big Y what, is uh, the appending of uh, all of our desired uh, values. So Y0, Y1, et cetera. Talked about. And so, so when things are, are formulated in this way, then the uh, all of set of parameters that, uh, that minimizes mean squared error turns out to be this is a slightly different form than what the book shows, so, so when things uh, are but uh, way, then I'll be able to make my point anyway. Here uh, is is in uh, is in this form. So so this is a, a product of uh, our uh, big X matrix here, and uh, and its transpose. Then this this thing right here. Um, this is an n plus one by n plus one uh, matrix, uh, and and we're asking to take the inverse of this matrix. So so in inverses of matrices for those of you who have uh, who have taken a linear algebra class, those can be reasonably expensive. Uh, but as long as n is so relatively small, and, and this works of uh, in practice on our modern machines, it, it works well even for, taken, uh, uh, for n of a thousand, can be uh, we, we, we can use, uh, we, we can invert such a matrix, and, and then the remaining product of multiplying by x and then y transpose again, um, that those are relatively uh, easy computations to do. So the dominant but the point is that the, the dominant uh, factor here is that we have to invert this large matrix. Uh, if, if n starts to get into the 10,000 or 100,000 or a million range, this matrix actually gets so big uh, that it really isn't computationally feasible to do at least on, uh, on say, our laptops or small desktop machines. One needs a, a much larger uh, uh, computer to, to make that work properly. This matrix so, so normal equation is really is quite is quite useful, uh, but it does uh, but it does uh, require this inverse uh, that may not always be possible, and and in those situations, uh, what we will do is actually drop back to a method that we've already talked about, which is gradient descent. So, so if you recall, the gradient descent uh, approach is we guess randomly what our w vector ought to be and then we uh, compute our error and uh, and then compute what the, the local gradient is and then take a small step that reduces our error uh, and then by iterating over over time we can we, we can uh, achieve a solution that minimizes our mean squared error uh, in in the case of using mean squared error and this linear model the best solution is a unique uh, solution uh, it's unique in the sense that uh, it, my 
uh, my uh, normal equation will give us the same answer as uh, as a gradient descent type of method. There are no uh, local minima in the error space. It's unique in the sense. So if I look at e as a function of some my normal equation will some w j as as a gradient descent type of method. There are no. If you recall this this type of a figure. Uh, it's, it, we're not going to have this type of a scenario where uh, we have uh, one set of weights that, uh, that, that sits at the bottom of a, of a bowl such that gradient descent won't uh, escape from this in order to find this one here. Uh, we are always in the situation where uh, our, uh, our error surface um, looks, uh, looks like this. Um, so, Normal equation will find that directly. Gradient descent will also find it. The the only exception here is that this bowl can actually have a, a long shape. If we look along another uh, dimension, we might have a set of equivalent uh, solutions, but they'll all be connected together. Normal equation will find that directly. Okay, so that that's the 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 introduction to regression in a linear world. We introduce some notation. Uh, as well as uh, this normal equation. Uh, and now it's time to start working on uh, some implementation in Python.